what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 3 and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest core was voice on this device and I have been using this ROM for quite a while now and here let me actually show you this is the first October 2020 build so quite the latest build uh, I would say but the security patch is still of September 5th 2020 not quite October yet and the Corvus OS version here says 9.5 in game official build we have the Corvus logo up top in the Android version and of course the Android version is still 10 not 11 I would say this is the most stable Android 10 ROM and I would say I'm just surprised to see this like happening with the Redmi Note 3 I think this device was launched with Android 5 releasing a device with Android 5 and right now it is receiving Android 10 as well as Android 11 unofficial ROMs right now that is just insane amount of development and huge thanks to the developers for making it happen. As you can see this is how the stock launcher looks like if i go into the settings of the stock launcher let me show you this is the corvus launcher here it says if you are noticing in the like stock launcher settings there is the misc stuff or miscellaneous stuff and here in the gestures we do have this double tap gesture you can set it to screen off flashlight google search the volume panel screenshot and a lot of other things but i would say the screen off is the most convenient one and there is a notification gestures clear all on swipe and stuff then inside home screen we have this show google app then lock desktop etc but only one thing that does disappoint me about the stock launcher is that you cannot disable this app suggestions panel here we also have this styles and wallpapers and if you go over here we also find this lock screen clock preset option and inside wallpapers we do have this Corvus OS wallpaper this is working fine here let me show you on the stock launcher to the left we have this google's discover page swiping down of course gets you to the quick settings panel swiping up gets you to the app drawer so here as you can see i just added a widget and this is working fine while it's raining outside you might hear some background noise i'm sorry for that and here we have the system panel and as you can see there is no system updater right now but i did update it from the 9.0 Corvus version that has worked pretty fine and it did update pretty well if you want to manually update any custom ROM you can click on the card right there if you don't know how to do that if you are flashing this ROM just make sure you are using the latest orange fox recovery and with that flash the latest firmware and the ROM file itself and just reboot and this is the gapps included version there is also another version which does not include gapps but I have flashed the gapps included version and here let me actually show you the quick settings panel now this is how it looks like and if you're noticing the animation does feel a little bit glitchy here and there but that's normal for a really old device like the redmi note 3 here as you can see there are more toggles you can add okay so i have added couple of things like this screen recorder but let me show you this screen recorder should be working fine as you can see we have this stock kind of screen recorder it shows three to one and it starts recording and there is couple of things that you can do that you can draw you can bring camera and stuff those kind of things are there so I'll just stop the recording for the time being. There is no FPS info option. I simply cannot find that. And in the gestures, we have this system navigation gestures. One thing that I like is that there is the navigation bar handle length and the thickness of it adjusting feature. So you can adjust both the thickness and the length or the size of it. So that is why it looks a little bit bold if you are noticing the pill bar kind of like iOS. So yeah, that looks pretty cool. We have two button and three button option for the navigation here and the default keyboard is of course google keyboard or gboard over here so that is cool but here let me actually show you if you want to customize the ui there are two options like this raven slayer and the themes if you want to go into the themes you will see that there is the accent picker then font type you can change it to plethora of fonts there is a lot of options for the font changing so yeah a huge amount of fonts are there and icon shapes are there and again plethora of icon shapes are there quick setting toggle styles are there these are the tiles of the quick setting so you can change these tiles styles over here so if i put it to this divided circle let me actually show you if i put it to these and right now as you can see this is how it looks like very cool i would say you can customize the ui as you like pretty much and there are plethora of options for everything like even you can choose it to time on and you gotta give it some time and right now as you can see the quick toggles has changed a little bit 
and this is how it looks like and there is the status bar quick setting icons you can change it to field rounded circular set options and there is a quick setting header style you can choose it to accent color or something if you want to have the accent colored header just like this looks cool and there is the switch style these are the toggle style in the settings you can change that then there is a system theme i have set it to pitch black so whenever i go into the dark theme the like background of the ui goes totally black and there is a schedule option for the dark theme or something and of course there is the accent color picker you can pick any kind of accent color that you can choose from over here like any kind of shade of any color you can choose from and you can tap over here to apply that very cool i would say and inside raven's layer this is how the customization panel looks like inside notifications we have the heads up option and stuff like that vibrate on plug everything is there notification ticker the edge lighting blink flashlight on call those things are there and inside misc we have the rounded corner so status bar padding i did adjust it a little bit you can also do that display cutout settings is there for some reason if you want to have that and inside screen animation we have the whole ui animation we also have the screen of animation i have set it to crt you can choose it to the scale or simple fade and there is the slinux mode and stuff then if you scroll down we have the double tap to sleep and swipe to take screenshot and let me actually show you this is the asus kind of screenshot gesture where you do get the long screenshot edit share and delete option so that is very cool and the double tap to sleep is for the status bar and that is working totally fine if you double tap on the status bar and also double tap to wake again is there and by the way the fingerprint scanner is working fine here but i'll show you that to you later on right now let me actually show you the double tap to sleep on the home screen is actually working fine now let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed yes it's not the fastest but i would say the fingerprint scanner is actually working and that is like pretty good but yeah the fingerprint scanner speed is definitely not the fastest that i have seen that i gotta say as you can see again the fingerprint scanner is not the fastest here let me just reduce the brightness i've seen this bug whenever i'm using double tap to sleep on the status bar and unlocking the device after that the brightness increases to the fullest and we have some dashboard condition customization let me go back to the lock screen here we have a really interesting feature which i'm going to show you and here by the way we have the lock screen style customization so you can customize the lock screen font the date font the like clock font you can increase or decrease the font size the style of it then we have this text on the lock screen clock and we have the like disable quick settings option and stuff lock screen charging info does appear then we have the music visualizer and stuff but the most interesting feature i would say in this fingerprint like preference that would be the always unlock with the fingerprint scanner i do not have to enter pin even if i reboot that is one really interesting feature so whenever i reboot i just tap the fingerprint scanner and it unlocks the device that is working totally fine here so that's great and inside raven's layer we have the battery option icon manager traffic indicator normal things like status bar clock options really huge amount of customizations are there then inside hardware we have the button customization and here we have the volume panel on the left side and stuff and let me actually show you well my volume buttons are really like broken by the way this is how the volume panel looks like and yeah you can expand it just like this this works pretty fine no issues if your volume buttons are fine they should work fine let me go back inside navigations we have this pulse navigation option and the haptic feedback for the long swipe and stuff these navigations are working fine inside power menu we do have this advanced reboot so let me actually show you inside advanced we do have the directly rebooting option to recover your fast boot so that is cool it works fine so that's all regarding the customization of this rom and inside battery settings we have this kind of like animation looks very cool and if you tap here you will see the full battery usage well the battery life i would say it should not be good because my battery itself is really old i would say the battery itself is about like five years old almost right now so yeah the battery life would be three to four hours pretty much and if you scroll down on the battery settings this shows the battery temperature over here and there is a battery designed capacity then current battery capacity shows up over here and if you notice the battery capacity i would say has been like decreasing with time and right now as you can see the 4000 mah battery capacity currently shows as 2557 mah so the battery has almost decreased to half the capacity almost I would say and there is a charging cycle well the charging cycle does not really show up as you can see right now it shows zero cycles and inside display settings we have this brightness level adaptive or auto brightness night light screen timeout 
lock screen timeout etc are there and inside rotations we have the 180 degree rotation and stuff like that we have the font size display size changing option lock screen display is there and you can go for here turn on always on display if you want to have that and double tap to wake is there also there is the lock screen timeout i forgot to mention you can change that too if you want to stare at the lock screen for 30 minutes you can do that here we have the wake up on plug disabling option then styles and wallpapers option is there again let me go back from okay so from here let me actually show you the game driver preference is there so you, you can go over here and set par app right now as you can see if this is an app like you want to enable graphics driver for you can choose to game driver so it will run better or something so that you can do that and inside sound let me actually scroll down we have this vibration and haptics you can enable like in call vibration then this this is the kind of thing this is the ringtone vibration pattern you can disable the screenshot sound touch vibration and stuff like that from here we have the link notification and stuff like that let me scroll down we actually do not have the me audio direct right now i think over here but yeah that's fine i would say that the me audio direct is not there it will be implemented in the future updates maybe and here inside security the most like at least one of the most interesting feature that i found is the app locker yes this is the same app lock that you find in most roms right now on the k20 pro or even any other device that are receiving like the redmi note 5 pro i did a video on if you want to see that video you can click on the card right there of course and this app lock is pretty similar to that and right now as you can see i have locked the telegram app over here and if i tap the fingerprint scanner and as you can see right now it unlocks the app this is a really handy feature and even if you go into the recents panel as you can see on the recents as soon as you go to the recents panel it shows a white screen it does not show the contents of that app so that, that is a very like handy feature in my opinion and this app lock also works with face unlock talking about face unlock let me quickly set up the face unlock right now so the face unlock setting up is done and if i try to use the face unlock right now okay so it did take a couple of tries over here do i have to swipe up no so right now as you can see the face unlock is working totally fine without any issues let me just double tap so yep it unlocks very fast no issues with the face unlock as you can see unlocks very fast let me show you one more time and it unlocks so right now let's try with the app lock and as you can see the app unlocked with the face unlock i did not tap the fingerprint scanner over here so yeah the face unlock also works with the app lock the normal locking unlocking stuff everything works and here if you want to know about the ir plaster present of the device if that is working fine and i would say yes that is actually working fine if you notice up close and there i hope you can see it the like ir blaster is actually working flawlessly no is issues with the ir blaster this is working totally fine and one more really interesting feature or really i am surprised to see it that the safety net actually passes right out of the box here as you can see all the things say is success so you can set up your google pay or any other banking apps on this rom and get it working right out of the box that is a really handy or important feature in my opinion that the banking apps are working right out of the box here now the stock camera almost at the end i'm going to show you right now this is a very basic google camera this is a google camera go and it is very fast it takes normal pictures pretty fine no issues and right now as you can see it takes very cool like normal pictures without any issues and it shows how many pictures it can take with your storage left and here in the video settings and it shows how much like video time you have left so yeah this is a very interesting feature and in the portrait mode as you can see you it does take the portrait mode pictures pretty fine let me actually show you if i turn on this face kind of touching mode i have the wire in front of my face but still if you are noticing the portrait mode did work this part over here is completely blurry and this part is pretty much in focus so yeah the like portrait mode and stuff everything is working you should not be having any issues with this camera this google camera go is a pretty basic and really interesting camera in my opinion as a stock camera on a custom rom and here are the benchmarks of this rom so let me know in the comments what do you guys think about the latest corvus os 9.5 on the redmi note 3 and if you still have a redmi note 3 let me know in the comments if you try out the like custom roms that are releasing right now 
and if you are interested to flash this Corvus 9.5 on your Redmi Note 3. So do share this video out with your friends if they have a Redmi Note 3 or if you want them to know about custom ROMs which are running great on the Redmi Note 3 right now. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel down there if you have not yet. This is Tito from Kerry and Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.